Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new video. Well, today we're going to be doing an entire workflow. We're going to create a 3D asset from start to finish. Okay, here we go. Right guys, we're in Maya 2018 and I'm going to take you through the full process of uh, low poly in Maya. We're going to um, create the high poly and UV in ZBrush. We're going to take it into Substance Painter. We're going to do texturing, uh, alphas, the whole nine yards. All right. Right, so what we're going to do is a simple prop. It's going to be a tombstone. We're going to take a, a simple cube to do that. Let's uh, hit R to uh, stretch it out and pull it up a little bit until we have the overall height, if you will. We're going to right click to the face, delete the bottom face, and then we're going to go up to Mesh Tools, Insert Edge Loop Option Box, Multiple 5. We'll set 5 here and 5 here. That is more than enough edge flow for a simple prop, right? So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna hit Q on our keyboard to get out of that edge loop mode. We're gonna right click at a vertex. So we're gonna drag select these, hit W to move them up. And we're gonna skip one at both ends and we're gonna move it up again. And we'll do that one more time and move that up one more time. Okay, pretty straightforward. Thickness is a bit much, so we're going to go to object mode, hit R, and push that in a little bit. And then we're going to go in and we're going to select that outer edge. So we're going to double click on this guy, this guy, this one, this one, that one, and that one. And then we're going to take this one on the corner and that one on the corner. And we're going to go to uh, edit mesh and bevel which I'll just uh, break that up a little bit. Now we have some uh, triangles going on here. That is not necessarily a problem as game engines uh, triangulate anyway, uh, but you know, just so you know, right? Okay, so I want a little floor section as well for this. You don't need to, but I just like it. So I'm gonna take a polygon plane, I'm gonna W to move that down. Hit control A, I don't need that level of subdivision, so I'm gonna go in and set that to, let's do a one by one. We're gonna hit R to scale it up a bit. And let's just uh, bring that up. So it's where it should be, all right. F to frame it, and that looks all right. I'm gonna drag select the two, I'm gonna go to mesh and combine. And then let's see, we'll go to uh, edit, delete by type history. Let's go to modify freeze transformation and modify center pivot, all right? So for now, this is our uh, low poly, okay? We're gonna select this guy and it's uh, combined, yep. We're gonna go to file and export selection. And on my desktop, and I was playing around with this, so let's overwrite this one. Just gonna go to export selection, overwrite, yep. There we go. And then it's time to take this into ZBrush. Here we go. All right, guys, we're in the ZBrush. Let's go up to uh, import. I'm gonna go to my desktop. I'm gonna select my uh, OBJ and I'm gonna left click and drag and pull that out. Hold shift to snap it. And then I'm gonna click on edit and I'm gonna click on make polymesh 3D. So now if I hold down uh, my left mouse, I can move it around. You can see that it's in orthographic mode, which I personally think always looks a bit weird. So I'm gonna to switch to a perspective mode. I like that much better. And what you can do is turn on your polyframe to see what your mesh looks like, okay? Now, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go in here and we're gonna make sure that the way that the mesh is distributed, it looks better, okay? So instead of having uh, this right here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to uh, geometry. We're gonna go to our remeasure right here. I'm gonna set that level quite low because this is supposed to stay our low poly. So let's try 0 0.5 roughly and click on our remeasure. And there you go. It uh, looks much, much better in my opinion. It's evenly distributed, so uh, it's good, right? So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go up to our uh, subtool and this is what we got so far. I'm gonna click on it, I'm gonna rename it and we'll call this uh, rest in peace underscore low poly. Okay, now I want a high poly as well. So we're gonna misuse this, we're gonna duplicate it. Uh, so we're gonna duplicate that. We're gonna take the duplicate, rename that 
and we'll call that one high poly. Okay. Now what we're going to do first is we're going to select our low poly, turn this guy off, make sure this one is selected. There you go. And we're going to UV this and we're going to do that in ZBrush. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to our, uh, where do you go? Z plugin. We're going to go to UV master and I'm going to select unwrap all very straightforward. Now that shouldn't take too long. I think it's actually already done. Uh, we'll just uh, check. We're going to go back and we're going to look at uh, flatten. As you can see, it did that. It's okay. And based on the texturing that we're doing on this thing, this is fine. We don't have to cut that up any further. If I were in Maya, I would probably do that, but for now it's fine. So we're going to go back to Z plugin. I'm going to go to unflatten and we're good. So we now have a low poly that's UV'd. We have a high poly that we can work on. So we're going to turn off the little eye thingy on that one. We're going to select our high poly. That's what we're working on right now. And we want a lot more uh, subdivision to make that look nice. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, geometry right here and we're going to dynamesh it. And uh, let's see, um, we need to kind of decide where we want to go as far as, um, you know, the poly count is concerned and so forth. So uh, let's see, where's my dynamesh? Right here. Okay. And we need to kind of decide on a resolution. So I'm going to go around about 500 or so. And yeah, I think that looks fine. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click on Dynamesh. We'll give that a second. As you can see, nice dense uh, surface here. Perfect. We can turn off Polyframe now and we can start to work on it, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a brush and uh, right now I'm working with a mouse, which is not ideal. So uh, forgive me for that. Uh, but let's see, we'll take our uh, trim dynamic uh, brush right here. Freehand looks fine and we'll just uh, go in. So like I said, if the movements look a bit uh, off, then, you know, that's why. Um, I'm doing that on purpose for the simple reason that not everybody has a uh, pen to work with and I want to keep things fair. Okay, now this is a little bit rough, so I'm gonna hit Control Z to go back and let's make our brush a bit smaller. And let's do that again. Yeah, we just want to use that brush to break up that edge there. Okay, and just kind of go through it. And you can turn on symmetry if you want, but I don't want things to look identical on both sides, so I'm just gonna do it this way. But if you do want to turn on symmetry, just hit X on your keyboard. Okay. And we'll just, uh, I'm trying to do this a bit quick because no point in you guys watching me do all that. It's, it's about the process as always. It's not necessarily about, you know, whether it turns out perfect or not. That's up to you guys. Okay. So we're just gonna break up that edge a bit there and let's see, we'll do that here as well, a little bit. Uh, let's see, starting to get there, yeah. I think that looks all right. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and actually let's add some noise, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in to surface uh, right here, and we're gonna go into noise up here, and we're gonna bump out that noise scale which I kind of make that very rough like this, which is perfect. That's what I like about this, okay? Now, not too rough because we want to add some text, but let's do something like this, okay? Looks all right, so let's click OK, which will give us this. Now, the ground surface looks cool too, that's nice. Uh, you can go in if you like and click on your brush, hit M to select your move tool, and we'll select that. We'll uh, right click and increase the size of the brush a little bit. And you know, I'll make it a bit bigger even. Just so your surface is not completely flat. And it looks a little bit more natural, okay? I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but yeah, you can see it, all right? So I'm gonna hold down Shift to snap it again. 
Now I created a, an alpha that I want to use. I recently did a, um, a tutorial on how to create and use alphas and I'll put a link in below. So if you don't know how to do that, you can find it. And uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to go to our brush. We're going to select our uh, standard brush. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to change this to a drag rectangle and then we'll go into my alpha. Right, so we've got our standard brush, we've got our rectangle select, and we've got our alpha. And I'm going to uh, left click. I'm roughly in the middle here. I'm going to left click and drag. Let's see what we got. I'm going to turn that around, and there you go. That looks all right. And there you have it. Now, um, I think that looks pretty cool. Uh, what we can do next is um, export this guy. Well, we're not quite there yet. Let's uh, clean it up a little bit more, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit my shift button. Just right click and make my brush a bit smaller. I'm gonna hit my shift button and I'm gonna just touch the top here and there because it looks like there are some lines visible. I think that looks fine, okay? All right. So let's say this guy is done, all right? So we got a UV low poly, we got a um, textured and quote unquote sculpted high poly. So let's uh, export these two, okay? So we can take them into, photo um, not Photoshop, into Substance Painter, right? So uh, let's see, we're gonna scrub back down here. We're gonna go to our subtool again, all right? So we've got our high poly selected right here. Let's go up to uh, export and uh, I'm gonna take my tombstone folder here and uh, let's see I'll call this a high poly ZBrush OBJ that's fine and then we're gonna go in and we're gonna select our low poly there you go and we're gonna do the same we're gonna go to export and I'm gonna call this one A low poly and save so now we have our high and low poly exported and now it's time to open up substance painter okay here we go all right guys well we're in the substance painter as you can see uh, I'm gonna leave this at PBR metal rough this is a new project so I went to file a new project and what we're gonna do is we're gonna select our low poly and there we go and let's see, we're gonna leave this at direct X. So we're gonna change this to 2K map size and we're gonna simply hit okay. That should bring in our low poly. Let's see if that is the case. Yeah, it is, and there we go. Okay, very straightforward as you can see. And next step is bake our high poly onto our low poly. Okay, so we're gonna go to bake textures. And initially I'm going to turn everything off with the exception of nor normal and ambient occlusion. For the simple reason that I want to make sure that there are no issues, uh, so if they are, uh, if there are issues, I can take the normal, for example, into Photoshop and correct it, because the other maps are uh, mainly based on these, right? So uh, let's see. We're going to select our high poly mesh right here. Uh, there we go. Uh, we're going to set this to two K map size as well, and we're good. So let's uh, bake. Yeah, looks uh, pretty good. So we're gonna go back into um, the others and we'll select them as well. And we'll bake again. All right guys, and there you go. I think uh, the bake turned out quite well. Uh, you can see all the details that we want. And um, from now on, it's basically texturing. Now this is not a texturing tutorial, but nevertheless, I'll uh, put some texture on so you can get an idea. And let's see what we got. Um, we're gonna have a look at our materials here. We have, uh, let's see, wood, plastic, copper. Okay, none of that's gonna work. Um, I did find something that is called concrete, uh, which is this guy right here. So why not have that on it? Okay, so I'm gonna pull that up drag that on and there you go now a couple of things we can do here just to spruce it up a bit I want the floor to resemble um, ground basically okay so I'm gonna add a new layer 
I'm gonna take a brush, uh, let's see, uh, we got this brush going on, I can increase the size if I like, decrease the flow, just so it's not too much. Then scroll down and let's see, we're gonna change the color here to, uh, let's do black initially, maybe increase that brush size a bit. And we're just gonna kind of go over that floor a bit just to break things up, okay? All right, and then we're gonna go back in and let's uh, tweak that color to something more green. Well, and then we'll go back in and we'll do something more towards brown. You get the idea, right? Okay. So a bit more, and then let's focus on our headstone. Okay, so for that, we'll uh, put in a new layer and we'll take something that's quite dark and we'll go in and just kind of hit those edges a bit. Like so, and then if you like, you can go in and look specifically at this area here. So we're gonna take the brush and push that down in size quite a bit. And you can go in and you know kind of add some details to our alpha, just so it pops a bit more. And like I said before, I'm doing this with a mouse, so it's not ideal, but you get the idea, right? All right, let's uh, zoom out a little. Maybe add a little green to this guy. Not sure if that's a great idea, but we'll see. Hang on, brush size. Yeah, why not? Okay, let's see the flow there. No, I'm not liking that green. Right, so that's basically it. Now, uh, what you can do next is go to mode. We're gonna go to rendering. And we can go in and let's see, we will set max samples, thousand, that's fine. We're gonna scroll down a little bit. We got a uh, environmental rotation. If you want to change the direction of the light, you can move that around like so. I think it wasn't too bad to begin with, so we'll leave that. You can click on dome, go down here, and use a clear color as a background instead. So you can, for example, push that up to white or whatever color you want, like this, uh, or simply keep the dome if you like by doing this. And uh, yeah, that's basically it, guys. Um, like I said, it's not a texturing um, tutorial, but hopefully this gives you a better understanding of how that entire flow works. If you have any questions, of course, let me know. Uh, don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and if you don't want to miss out on future videos Please, please, please subscribe. Okay. Well, that's it guys. Thank you very much and see you guys next time. Bye Well, thanks for watching and before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe. Okay, see you guys next time. Bye